We were told three partial meltdowns, don't worry about it. Now we know it was 100% core melt in all three reactors. Um, Japan is by orders of magnitude many times worse than Chernobyl. Never in my life did I think that six nuclear reactors would be at risk. Well, TEPCO is like the little Dutch boy. All of a sudden, we have cracks in the dike. You put a finger here, you put a finger there, and all of a sudden, new leaks start to occur, and they're overwhelmed, literally making it up as they go along. We're in totally uncharted territories. You get any nuclear engineering book, look at the last chapter, and this scenario is not contained in the last chapter of any nuclear engineering textbook on the planet Earth. So they're making it up as they go along, and we are the guinea pigs for this science experiment that's taking place. All radiation is damaging, it's cumulative, each dose you get adds to your risk of getting cancer. Within days of the Fukushima Daiichi catastrophe beginning, we were getting uh, fallout coming down in rain in the United States, not in insignificant quantities. And also, of course, the, uh, the seafood, um, not only does the ocean's currents bring the radioactivity this way, but also uh, the sea life itself, the bluefin tuna, uh, migrated from Japan to North America and carried the radioactive cesium in its flesh over here. Wow, not a good time to be eating tuna. The food chain remains contaminated for hundreds or thousands of years and we'll start seeing lung cancer and leukemia I think two to five years from now. And then solid cancers will start appearing um, 15 to 60, 70 years later. So the ace up the sleeve is, of the nuclear industry is the incubation time for cancer. It takes a long time for cancers to develop once you have inhaled or been exposed to these radioactive elements. And no cancer identifies its origin. And so there is already a level of cancer in society, but it's going to increase dramatically. The problem is not really under control. It Doesn't will not it? be under control for, it's estimated, between 40 and 100 years from now. There's no way to clean it up. They say 40 years, but they can't clean it up. They can't. And the site's still unstable and vulnerable to natural disasters. If there is another earthquake, a serious one, six, seven, eight or nine magnitude, that would rattle all these 10, 1,060 tanks. It would rattle the, the, the damaged cores, spent fuel, who, whose structures have already weakened. Yes. That's a potential very, very serious threat. Approximately 300 tons of water was filtering through the site until early this month, becoming laced with radioactive materials and then seeping into the sea. Another factor is the ever-increasing amount of water accumulating inside damaged infrastructure. Once it makes its way into reactor buildings, it mixes with radioactive isotopes for months, TEPCO workers have been pumping up 400 tons of water every day and storing it in tanks on site. Uh, the, there is 1,060 tanks, stainless steel water tanks, that are holding the water which they keep pumping into the, into the uh, damaged reactors and the uh, uh, spent fuel storage pools. From the air, the scale of the problems at Fukushima become clear. The growing mass of storage tanks now dwarfs the plant itself. More than a million tons of highly radioactive water is now stored here. But the tanks have been hastily built. They're made of steel plates, bolted together, rather than welded. Last week, workers detected a major leak in one of those tanks. About 300 tons of water escaped, releasing several quadrillion becquerels of radioactive particles. Experts have often pointed out how vulnerable they are to damage. The tanks, though, have been put together very quickly. There's no guarantee they'll last. Their seals are made of rubber, and the joints and, and bolts are corroding. And they may last not more than five years. So the tank farm has grown dramatically, and it's on the hill. 
Of course, the problem is because it's on the hill, the um, water flows down. And if there's an earthquake, all of these pipes are held together with plastic piping. Not much different than what you've got on a swimming pool. So the plastic pipe will, will, will um, snap and that water will just run right down that roadway directly into the ocean. And how long the contamination has been leaking into the water? Very likely since the uh, explosions and the meltdown at uh, Fukushima Daiichi in March of uh, 2011. Wow, that, that is quite a long time. Now, how much and what sort of radiation is leaking into the Pacific? I know there's all different types, so if you can explain that right. in a little detail. Well, clearly what we've seen now is the movement of radioactive hydrogen, tritium, uh, which uh, is a uh, mobile uh, radioactive isotope, but clearly um, radioactive cesium-134, 137, strontium-90. We're seeing a full range of radioactive contaminants now moving, which indicate that uh, the damaged cores of these reactors, the meltdowns themselves, uh, have, are now contributing to the contamination of the Pacific Ocean and groundwater that's moving at a, about a, a rate of a 300 to 400 gal uh, th metric tons uh, per day. So the radiation has been leaking into the water and polluting the fish continuously for the last two years. Radioactive iodine-129, its half-life is 17 million years, plus strontium, plus cesium, plus tritium, and I could go on and on and on. If it gets into the sea, the algae concentrated hundreds of times, then the crustaceans concentrated hundreds of times, then the little fish, then the big fish, then us because we stand on the apex of the food chain. You can't taste these radioactive elements, you can't see them, and you can't smell them. They're silent. This graphic shows the gradual contamination of the Pacific Ocean due to leaks of radioactive water from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. The simulation, which was run by a German marine research institute, shows the entire Pacific waters being polluted by radioactive water in just six years. the fuel core of Unit 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. More than 1,500 fuel rods sit in a damaged storage pool 30 metres above ground. Yeah, the, the amount of radioactivity within the, in the rods themselves is about 14,000 times that of the, the Hiroshima bomb. We are dealing with diabolical energy. E equals mc squared. It's the energy that blows up nuclear bombs. Einstein said, nuclear power is a hell of a way to boil water. They need to remove those fuel rods from the pool because if there's another earthquake, building four would go down probably and the, all those fuel rods would be exposed to the air and they would burn and they would release ten times more radiation or cesium than was released at Chernobyl. Huge amounts and pollute much of Japan and the Northern Hemisphere. So we're in a nuclear crisis at the moment. If there's another earthquake and Building 4 collapses, which contains the cooling pool with fresh fuel, I'm going to evacuate my family from Boston. So they've put a crane on top of that building, which is shaky anyway. And they're going to lift the fuel assemblies out one by one with the crane and it will be done manually. Normally those rods are removed by computer control with millimetres to spare. It's a very delicate operation. The fuel rods must be kept submerged and must not touch each other or break. Nuclear experts warn any mishaps could cause an explosion many times worse than that one here in March 2011. Because if several rods touch each other you could reach criticality and the whole fuel pool could go critical or if the rods break as they're being lifted out, large amounts of radiation would escape from the rods and the area would have to be evacuated, meaning that if the area is evacuated, the continuous operation of cooling five spent fuel pools and three melted cores would stop. <laughs> Need I go on? We need to get the subscribe and get this unity stronger 
and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad. The decommissioning team is facing another setback. They've revealed a new roadmap for scrapping the plant, and there is a delay in a key initial step. Officials from the government and TEPCO approved the revised plan. It refers to two important tasks. The removal of spent fuel rods in cooling ponds and cleaning up melted nuclear fuel. Officials pushed back the schedule to remove the rods by three years. They say they first need to remove debris and decontaminate the buildings. Experts still need to locate and study the melted fuel inside the reactors. And they need to consider new removal methods that don't use water. Experts still need to locate and study the melted fuel inside the reactors. And they need to consider new removal methods that don't use water. The initial approach involved filling the reactor containment vessels with water before removing the melted fuel. But officials couldn't guarantee the vessels would stand up to earthquakes and wouldn't leak. The new roadmap keeps the initial target of beginning the fuel removal process within six years. There is no change to the overall goal to complete the decommissioning work in 30 to 40 years. Now, here's the finance minister, Taro Asso. Remember, everybody's an Asso. Who can forget Taro Asso? <laughs> the biggest Asso in Japan. Who can forget him? He's the finance minister, right? Yes. What an Asso that Asso is. <laughs> well, he's in this headline. Let elderly people, quote, hurry up and die, says Japanese minister. Taro Asso says he would refuse end-of-life care and would feel bad knowing treatment was paid for the, by the government. NHK has obtained a report by the International Atomic Energy Agency on the nuclear accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Three of the plant's six reactors melted down following the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. The report says Japanese officials didn't do enough to prevent the disaster. Duh. The summary report was prepared by 180 scientists from more than 40 countries. The IAEA board examined it this week before a final version is issued in September. The report says there were projections that a magnitude 8.3 quake would lead to tsunami measuring up to 15 meters high. It says officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company didn't take necessary precautions. The report also points out to measures to prevent the flooding of emergency diesel generators were inadequate. The experts have proposed a periodic review of safety requirements. They also recommend assuming scenarios in which multiple natural disasters occur simultaneously. It's laughable and troubling, both combined. All nuclear reactors in Japan remain offline. Some utilities are turning to coal-fired power generation as a low-cost and stable alternative. But environment ministry officials are against a plan to build a new power plant in western Japan, citing global warming concerns. <laughs> What's so funny now? I sometimes just think funny things. <laughs> An operator that has secured funding from J Power and Osaka Gas is planning to build a 1.2 million kilowatt plant in Ube City. The ministry has conducted an environmental impact study of the project. Environment Minister Yoshio Mochizuki said he will submit a letter of objection, uh, of objection rather, to the Economy, Trade and Industry Ministry, which has the authority to approve the plan. I fear the operation of the thermal power plant could undermine Japan's efforts to achieve its greenhouse gas emissions reduction goal. You cursed rat! Look what you've done! Earlier this month, the government proposed a 26% cut in emissions from 2013 levels. Environment Ministry officials are encouraging the use of renewable energies such as solar and wind power. They're calling for limiting coal-fueled power generation, which involves sizable carbon dioxide emissions. But economy, trade and industry ministry officials support the method because it is low cost and stable. In Nuke news, back in 2014, an explosion ripped through the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant, or WIP, in New Mexico. An underground dump for nuclear waste produced at the nearby Los Alamos weapons facility. 
total of 34 workers were exposed to toxic radiation as a result of that explosion, 13 of whom suffered from internal radioactive contamination, meaning they got it in their bodies inside. At first, the cause of the accident was a mystery, but slowly but surely, the story started to leak out. Now it appears that the explosion occurred when workers at the whip used the wrong kind of kitty litter. Yes, that's right, kitty litter. You know the stuff you use to keep your cat's poo from smelling up the house? Pretty crazy, right? So why are we using kitty litter to store nuclear waste? And what does this tell us about the overall safety of our nuclear waste facilities? With me now for more on this is Paul DiRienzo, independent investigative journalist and contributor to Who, What, Why. Uh, Paul, welcome. Welcome, thank you. So kitty litter, huh? What the heck is going on here? Well, kitty litter is used. Uh, it was not really supposed to be used, uh, the organic kitty litter. They were supposed to use a clay-based inorganic kitty litter. And uh, many stories have been told. The one I seem to have latched onto in my report, and I think is pretty much representative of what happened, is that the instructions from Livermore National Laboratory to pack the waste, which contained liquid nitrates, in Orga inorganic kitty litter was uh, misidentified as the two words inorganic kitty litter. And the organic kitty litter, they eventually packed the waste in, reacted with the liquids in the barrel, and formed a, a patented plastic explosive, according to one report. A patented? So they should have known. Uh, yeah, really? a patented, meaning one that they knew would have existed. Oh, I see. That's re remarkable. Um, why? Why kitty litter? I mean, to begin with, and, and I mean, it's are an they absorbent. ordering this stuff on Amazon.com or something, or is that, are, we, are we talking <laughs> they, about tons and tons of it? I mean, what's the deal? No, they went and bought it. My understanding is, and we're still learning about this, and it's, it's really just coming out in dribs and drabs, to be honest with you, is that they went to a, um, a local market and bought it. Uh, local, like a local supermarket or, or cat yeah, food store Yeah, it was sweet, something. sweet brand, sweet scoop brand, a very common brand. Amazing. Do they do this at other facilities? Uh, well, I, this is the only one for at least true waste, transuranic waste that I know of. There are some other private. Uh, in Texas, there's a place that's holding a number of barrels of this waste. Uh, the original report was that one barrel was involved in the explosion, uh, but it, now it's coming out according to the state of New Mexico and not the federal government that up to 500 barrels have been so packed. That's and a, they're not, their, loca that's their locations are not. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, their locations are not uh, not totally well known. Yeah, one to five hundred. That's a little more than an order of magnitude. Um, this explosion was contained pretty quickly. What could have happened if it wasn't contained quickly? Well, uh, it, 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 I don't know if it really was contained. Uh, a number of barrels were affected. It was sixteen hundred degrees Fahrenheit uh, within the area, and uh, an area the size of a football field was contaminated. It's going to cost five hundred million dollars to fix, and many many years. Was, so was the way that this played out a worst case scenario or was this like some sort of intermediate it's, scenario? I mean, how bad could it have gotten if they it's had pretty really, close. go ahead. I would say from, I would say it was, although um, uh, what's reported as a small amount of radioactivity was released, none was supposed to have considering it's supposed to hold radioactivity for a quarter million years and it's only 15 years old, they're already releasing radioactivity, but uh, it's, uh, it was pretty close to a worst case scenario. Wow. There's a similar facility in West Valley, New York, near Buffalo, and it also doesn't have that great a safety record. And as you, as you point out, I mean, this stuff is going to be radioactive for a million years, and I'm not sure that the kitty litter store down the road is going to be there for a million years. What does this tell us about right. the state of our nuclear industry? Uh, and, uh, and not just, this is not just power, but weapons, you know, just the whole. Right, it's mostly about weapons. The, the facility, the waste isolation pilot plant is, is uh, solely for uh, weapons related and we uh, nuclear, we nuclear weapons complex related waste, true waste, transuranic waste, waste that's contaminated with elements beyond uranium on the periodic table, including plutonium. And uh, it's about enough to fill, depending on who you talk to, one or two Empire State Buildings. It goes back to 1942. And uh, it's been sitting basically at a handful of locations around the country, well, more than a handful, numerous locations around the country where work was done on the original atom bombs that were uh, uh, exploded in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So uh, we're basically still throwing out and trying to figure out what to do with waste that was produced 75 years ago and not having any luck in disposing of it and uh, much less the stuff that came later during the Cold War. And um, 
uh, the uh, possibility, uh, what's happening is that now places like Hanford, Washington, West Valley, New York, uh, where weapons-related waste was uh, often mixed with waste from nuclear power plants, and therefore it's not really clear what's there in the waste, uh, including plutonium and other strontium, cesium, and other elements that are, in the case of West Valley, New York, uh, been detected in, lake, in the Great Lakes and in the rivers in an area where uh, there's swamps and uh, watershed that is uh, quite per, uh, swampy and, and wetland, and the last place on Earth you would ever want to put waste the people in New York want to send, ship it to the desert in New Mexico, and people in New Mexico don't want it really. Even the, uh, especially if it's mixed with the very high activity uh, uh, commercial waste. So, uh, um, meanwhile, the Department of Energy is launching its uh, stockpile stewardship program to spend billions, billions of dollars to totally restructure our nuclear weapons complex and to build these new generations of nuclear weapons, which are designed rather than blowing up the cities of the Soviet Union so much, destroying the underground bunkers of Iran, Iraq, or any other country that the U.S. fights with. And this is the future, the stockpile stewardship program. It's supported by Republicans and Democrats alike. And um, they can't even dump the waste from 75 years ago, so there's definitely questions. Yeah, we've got a serious problem. Uh, Paul D. DiRienzo, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for the great report. All right.